My name is Maria Loftus and I am one of the admissions consultants here at Kaplan. Prior to becoming an admissions consultant, I was the former assistant dean at the University of California, San Diego School of Medicine. I was there for about 20 years. During that time, I had the great opportunity to not only represent the Western Medical Schools, which was Colorado West, uh, to not only represent all of the schools to the AAMC's National Committee on Admissions, but I also chaired that committee. And so altogether, I think I was probably did that for about 10 years or so. Not only did we do best practices and work with medical schools across the country as to how they might want to structure their admissions process and things they might want to think about, but it gave me the opportunity to really peek behind the, the um, curtain as to what schools did. I always thought the way we did it was the way everybody else did it, but there are lots of nuances. And so now working with clients, I get to share with them some of the thinking that medical schools have as to why they do what they do, why are they asking what they're asking, and to help them structure their best application, to put their best foot forward. And I really, really enjoy that. Today, we're going to be talking about the medical school interview, and we will be discussing a public policy question. Joining me today is Elizabeth Fossis. Elizabeth, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, um, my name is Elizabeth Fossis. I am a second year medical student at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. And today, for the purposes of this, um, I'm going to be posing as a medical school applicant. Great. Thank you so much. So as I said, this is a public policy question, which you might more typically see in an MM style interview, but it also can pop up in a traditional interview. We're doing a traditional interview today. So Elizabeth, I'd like you to consider the possibility that in the future, Congress is considering mandating that all Americans be vaccinated should a COVID-19 vaccine become available. Please share with me your thoughts as to the broad public policy issues that should be considered in light of such a possible uh, policy. Sure. Um, also a really interesting question given the circumstances this year. Um, so I think there's a lot of different pieces to this. The first, obviously, and the most important in my opinion is going to be kind of the public health question, right? Um, We've heard a lot about opening schools back up and opening businesses back up and the fallout from the economy. Um, and really all of that, I think <laughs> the solution to all of that is really creating an environment where people feel safe going back into work, going back into schools and living their lives as they normally would. Um, so that's kind of the plus side of that. Um, on the other hand, of course, you have a lot of people who for whatever reason are not going to like that, just like we have a lot of people now that have kind of politicized the mask issue. Um, vaccines, as you might be able to imagine, are even more um, invasive in a sense. So we can imagine that the pushback would be even stronger on that end. Um, a mandate is a mandate. It's going to come with a lot of political considerations. Um, and obviously, we're going to have to give kind of some leeway to individuals to make choices just like we do with other vaccinations for children. Um, but I think definitely it's a really critical piece. And then of course the other piece is also going to be the logistics of that. Um, are we at a point with like the infrastructure? Where are people going to get these vaccines? Are the vaccines available from pharmaceutical companies? Um, and have they gone through like the rigorous safety and efficacy trials that we would expect um, in a situation like this? Thank you very much. You did a great job. So Thanks. let's talk about um, what a public policy question might look like in the future and how to structure your response, which I think you did a great job. Thanks. But just talk kind of generally about it. So public policy questions, the reason a medical school would ask a public policy question is they want to know, are, is the applicant that we're talking to are they engaged with the world around them? Are they aware what's going on? So oftentimes I will have applicants ask me, you know, they'll say, is there a book they could go read? Is there a list of public policy questions? And my response is always, uh, yeah, read the newspaper, <laughs> uh, watch the news. You know, a public policy question is always gonna be about what's 
currently happening. And of course, uh, in the past, it's been things like vaccination or should people visiting a hospital required to wash, be required to wash their hands before they enter? You know, when we were talking about staph infections and things like that, or it could have been bicycle helmets, motorcycle helmets, vaping. You know, it's whatever is currently happening that's in the news and it usually has to do with something health related because those are the things you know that we get excited about. So um, right now we happen to be in COVID. Six months from now, hopefully that'll be behind <laughs> us and we'll be on to something else. Yeah. So just be aware, you know, that it's to understand whether or not the applicant is aware of what's going on around them. Now the next thing you did that was really great is you presented that there are going to be multiple factions, multiple well-meaning, you know, equally well-meaning, often equally well-educated people who are going to come down on opposite sides of the issue. And you want to be demonstrating to the interviewer that you realize that issues aren't black and white, even when we're talking about public health. You know, that there are multiple perspectives and that those perspectives need to be honored. The next thing you did that I really appreciated and we would be looking for an applicant to talk about is that there are complexities to actually implementing any type of policy. And that ideally those are thought of before the mandate goes into effect so that when we do roll it out, it actually can achieve the goals that we want to achieve or that we say, you know, the public that we've all agreed on that we want to achieve and to mention some of those. So, and then the last thing you did that was great, I didn't ask you to draw a conclusion. I did not ask you to state your opinion as to what we should do. I simply asked you to do exactly what you did, which was to consider the broad public policy issues. Lots of times I think applicants fall into a trap with these questions because they think of the answer as being absolutely right, absolutely wrong, you know, in terms of what they think, you know, is absolutely correct. And particularly right now when we're talking about a possible COVID vaccine, you know, many people might assume that an admissions committee member would absolutely think that was a great idea. But as you've pointed out, there are lots of complexities and people who sit on admissions committees, you know, they have their opinions just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not asked to give a conclusion, you know, an opinion, don't, you know, just do the analysis. And I think I would add, just in case you are asked uh, what you think the right answer is, then of course, you would give your conclusion, but I would couch it with, you know, given my understanding of the circumstances right. presented in the question and given my real life experiences, this is what I would recommend. However, if in the future I was presented with more additional evidence, I would rethink my opinion. Right. Because what you also want to be showing is that you are evidence-based. You're not someone who is emotionally wedded to your opinion. That's not what we are looking for in physicians. We're looking for people who, hey, give me new information, give me evidence, and I will totally, you know, reconsider and I might modify my position then. So really good job. Thanks. And have you had any experience when you reflect back on your medical school interviews? where you got these kinds of questions? Definitely. And I'm so glad that you mentioned the point about making conclusions um, because so often when I'm working with students, they always say like, okay, look, what am I supposed to say here? What do they want to hear? Um, and I think it's a really important note that like, if they don't ask, you don't have to even go there. I think that's right. great. Right. 
Well, thank you very much. So if you have any questions after hearing our discussion, uh, just put them in the comment section below and we'll be sure to get back to you. And also, of course, if you need help with your application, if you've got questions, if you if you want some um, you know, tips on interviewing, just contact us. We're here to help. Thank you.